All right, guys, I'm here with some proof. All right, so I just actually, I didn't know about this, but I caught a different YouTuber got out, recommended me by, by the algorithm, and she was talking about, she was reporting on this. Okay, so what is this? Here's the loan sharking. Okay, you guys remember the loan sharking I was talking about? Okay, so the IMF and World Bank Group, along with the Treasury, and, you know, Yellen, they met in France, and basically what they're doing is figuring out how to write more loans to developing countries. All right, so what's happening? Fifty billion in lending capacity over the next decade. Two hundred billion in lending capacity over the same time frame. Through balance sheets... Okay, look, so basically what they're saying is they're cooking books. They're printing money. Everything that you're not allowed to do as an accountant, that's what the governments do. That's what that's what the Treasury does. That's what the IMF does. That's what the World Bank Group does. Everything that's a no-no that would get you sent to, uh, to prison, they do it. Okay? So... And they do it in the interest of what? Quote unquote macroeconomic stability. All they care about is collecting interest payments. Okay? So let's go back to the debt clock. Okay? Because that, that, this is kind of like gives you the idea of, of where it's coming from, right? This is the debt that they write in order to create currency. They're never going to pay that back. They just create it so that we can lend it. Well, obviously this is just the U.S., so it's not all just coming from the U.S., but I, um, I would imagine that most of it's coming from the U.S. Anyway, but... So they create this debt that they're never going to pay off. They create currency out of that debt. They loan the currency to a country with interest, and they have to collect payments on it, right? Remember the loan sharking thing I was talking about. What's the purpose of that? The currency they're giving to the country is worthless. They don't give a crap about the currency. What they care about is making the difference in wealth. So if they're loaning to a country to quote-unquote help it develop, they're loaning it an amount that obviously it's not going to pay back. But they're lying to that country, right? Essentially saying, if we loan you this money, you're going to figure out how to build up an economy that takes money from other people, and then you're going to be able to pay us back. And the that's a pipe dream, dude. That's a fool's errand. They're not going to be able to do that. So what's going to happen? The country is going to try to pay off what it can with the wealth that's already in that nation. Okay, so the wealth that's existing in that developing third world country, which is none anyway, the, the, the Treasury, the World Bank Group, they come in and they siphon what little wealth that country has by loaning currency to it, inflating its that country's currency, right? And then they just, everything that the country has to pay back for that loan is its own wealth that it already had. And it's getting given through the wealth transfer to the World Bank Group, IMF, okay? That's how it works. It's sick. It's sick that this is like, this is how the world works and this is not okay. All right, this is not okay, but this is what, this is how it happens, okay? And so in order to siphon wealth, they create this currency and it inflates our own currency. So what's the hedge? The NASDAQ, the S&P 500, right? As our currency inflates, as all currencies inflate, this becomes the hedge. But, but why, why are there recessions then? Because... If this thing just only went up, then everyone would use it as a hedge, right? So what do they do? They engineer a recession to knock people out, to scare people into thinking, oh, this time the market's going to really crash for real and everyone's going to lose everything. And they keep they do that every so often, right, to knock out uninformed people to, to prevent people who aren't in the know of how the system works from hedging against the... the depreciating purchasing power of of whatever currency, right? Usually the U.S. dollar, 
right? That's how the whole system works, okay? So just I, I may just get this in your head, okay? Once you start to see, you'll see. Okay, now here, let's get into another thing. Let's see if I can pull it up on my... I was getting recommended a ton. Okay, hold on. Um, nah, I'm just going to get random crap. Um, dang it. Okay, so anyway. Well, I, I didn't have it... Um, I don't have it now for you, but basically I scanned YouTube today, and at one of the times the algorithm, the, my, my full page was just finance videos, and every single finance video that the algorithm, which is owned by who? YouTube, which is owned by Google. Okay, so the algorithm is pushing out videos that promote a sell narrative. Okay, so everyone is convinced that this is going to be a crash. There's so much clickbait coming out today, yesterday, this weekend, talking about how this little turnaround right here, right here, that this is like we're we're finally breaking down. We're finally breaking down. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's all gonna crash now. But look, price went down into that fair value gap right there on the Nasdaq, just barely. And I'm not saying it doesn't maybe sell off for a little bit, like further, but it's we're getting hammered with the sell narrative still. It's still hammering with the sell narrative. So what does that mean? It can't continue to go down very far in the long run. It could maybe go sideways for a while or down a little bit, kind of like the bank panic, right? Where it, it crashes a bit. And But who even knows if that will happen? But they're not, they cannot, the people who run the money system cannot afford to pay out retail traders who are betting on the sell narrative. Okay, because now everyone knows how to short sell. Okay, before it was like scarier, but now people know how to short sell. People know how to buy puts, right? People know how to sell calls. Okay, retail traders didn't really know how to do those things before, but because now they're more informed and they know how to place bets in more, um, slightly more advanced ways, the news can take a lot of advantage of that. Right, and that's what's happening this time around. Now everyone knows how to essentially short in one sense or another, but usually buying puts on Robinhood or something. The banks are taking advantage of that, right? And the media is taking advantage of that and pushing out sell narratives, and the YouTube algorithm is taking advantage of that. I have an idea. Let's just um, let's just type in market crash. Here we go. Is a stock market crash coming in Q3, Q4? Stock market crash. I mean, I know I searched that, but... Airbnb. This, dude. See this? Guys, look at this. I don't know where you are financially in life, but look at this. Do you know what this means? Buy a freaking house right now. Get a freaking... Get a house. Get a house. Get a house, guys. Get a house. Please. If you can afford a house, buy it now. They're going to get... They are not getting any cheaper, dude. Okay. So, anyway. I don't know what else to say. Kind of a loose, a loose video, but I'm looking for higher prices still. Okay, look at the fear, the fear on the news. When the fear hits the news, who's buying? Wall Street. The government. Let's take out let's check out the treasury bonds. Let's check out the treasury bonds. Alright, let's pull up a chart. This is not treasury, this is crude. Actually, let's look at crude for a second. Cause why not? Alright, yep. So as you can see, what happened, this war was used as, a, as an excuse to manipulate oil prices. I would guess it's probably... Oh, it's going to go down to 50, dude. Watch oil go down to 50. I almost want to short oil, actually. I should have been shorting for a long time, but... I might short, I might short like a crude oil ETF or something, or buy puts. Um... That's not financial advice, though. I don't really know crude that well, so... But to me, that just looks like it. Okay, look, guys, guys! They sell all their T-bills. They get everyone to buy them. They make people think it's going up. Now what's happening? 
It's consolidating before a, a further up move? No. It's consolidating before it wants to go down. Okay, and this is why fundamentals are more important than technicals. Because a technical trader might think like, well, they could have different opinions. But obviously you can see it's a downtrend of these major highs are lower. So you know it's a downtrend. But like, let's say you're like, oh, this is a mar market structure shift on the daily. It's going, it's heading up, right? But you see how there's not much follow through right now. Why? Because the, the, the government just unloaded these. They're not in demand anymore right they're in supply right the, the supply just got flooded onto retail there's no algorithmic reason to support price it's going to be driven down right do you think about it this way does does the gov do you really think that the government actually wants to owe citizens money cuz that's what bonds are right they're saying like we're going to sell you these bonds you're going to make interest on them in 10 years or you know whatever whenever it depends on the bond okay but think about this if you afterwards if you account for inflation and everything it's it can't be a a net positive for the person buying it from the government right because the government what incentive would the government have to sell a bond if they're gonna pay more money on it later right and you think like oh well they need the money now so they're willing to point pay more later but again, look into how everything I've said. Look into everything I've said. It, they, they don't. That's not how it works. They have to. They want the government wants to collect interest on something, right? They want to make the difference, right? You need to ha have a negative return on your investment after inflation's all said and done, and the purchasing power of the dollar. It's all obscured so that you don't realize it. So that like maybe you actually will get you'll end up with more cash than you had before, right? But the but the value of that cash, that currency, will be so much less. Will be okay, I wouldn't say so much less, but it'll be enough less that the go that it's worth it for the government to do this, right? The government is a for profit entity, right? They're not gonna sell you bonds and then pay you more money on them. Right? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's fool's gold. Okay? It's it's literally fool's gold. Okay? So so I don't know what else to say about that. I just, I really doubt that the, you see the price of these, like, appreciate, uh, sorry, excuse me, very quickly at all, if at all. Uh, I would imagine that they kind of trade sideways or down while, um, while the purchasing of the power, power of the dollar depreciates, right? So, you just have to think critically about this. If you were running the government and you needed to make money, would you sell someone something that you're going to have to pay them more for over time or something or or would you construct a system in an obscure illusory way that would make the person think that they're getting paid more but actually after all is accounted for they're actually losing money on it right but it's not like it won't be that much it won't be that bad for any one person but collectively the cumulative difference in wealth that is transferred by everyone who has bought bonds right the the cumulative difference in wealth that happens to everyone that the government siphons is going to be worth it for them in the long run right does this make any sense i know i'm not explaining it the best or like showing you a chart and figures but i'm more of a conceptual person and that's all you really need to be to like to really start to trade with long term trades but does what i'm saying make sense like you have to everything that you have to do financially has to be geared towards making a profit at the at the at the bottom line is that right so you can't sell somebody bonds that are going to m make them money and lose you money who would do that who in their right mind would do that nobody okay so yeah i don't know just think about that if you disagree with me or you have like some hard evidence that proves me wrong feel free to come at me with it but from a conception like you can you can come with all the data and statistics you want but to me that doesn't first off statistics can be manipulated if you've ever taken a statistics class or even just learned a little bit of, about statistics you will know that statistics can be highly manipulated you can it's not that you skew the data it's that what data you pr represent like you can make it seem like certain things are correlated when it's actually just a coincidence right that's mainly what financial news media tends to do right they say so this here's one of the lies from recent that higher interest rates means that the market crashes 
Okay, that ignores when. Um, there was a time, I think it was in the 70s or was it the 80s? It was, it was the 80s, I think. Well, we don't have the 70s on here. But interest rates were high in the 80s, and the market trended up, right? So, a, a statistical lie is that they'll be like, what, this is, again, this comes into the big game plan of, like, the Fed and the Treasury, is that what happened last year? They engineered beforehand a recession. Then they, quote-unquote, reacted to the recession by increasing interest rates. So now everyone is led to believe that there's a positive or a negative correlation between interest rates and the value of like tech stocks basically for the most part right? like the overall stock market right when in actuality that's not that th there's a deeper level to the game that's being played and those things are not correlated at all they can have interest rates go up while the market goes down or they can have them both go up or they can have them both go down if it's whatever they want right and because if there was anything consistent about that then everyone would know it and it would make money correct so it's a deeper there's a <laughs> there's a show called westworld and i remember in season one the guy goes there's a deep there's a deeper level to this game well that's how it is with the market there's a deeper level there's there's the the illusion that everyone's led to believe that causes losing trades on the side of retail giving winning trades on the size of side of the informed investors on in the commercial banks on wall street and the government entities that are managing the government's money, etc. Financial institutions, stuff like that. Private institutions. Look at this. You want to see something interesting? I'm just on a ramble today. That's. I'm sorry, but... Reddit is a, an American social news aggregation, content rating, and discussion website. Private business. Owned by... This guy. And who's it owned by? Majority stake. Advanced publications. Private. What does that mean? Donald Newhouse. Private. What does that mean? Subsidiaries, by the way. Charter. Warner Brothers. See this? Okay. It's all connected. I'm not going to go through this all right now. I've already been through all these pages and like looked at all the connections. Okay. The same people that own Reddit own own Spectrum, okay? They also own Warner Brothers. They have a, I think that's the largest stake that anyone has, right? Um, so, what's their financial, who, who do these guys, what's their, where, where do they um, put out their um, opinions, right? Look at everything they own. Oh! Gee, I wonder, who do they own exactly? Do you see? So, the people that own Reddit own CNN, right? Okay, now, this is a private entity, though. So, if you go to SEC Edgar, do you know what an SEC Edgar filing is? Okay, so this is where public companies and people who are on the boards of public companies have to report all the trades they make, like, within a certain amount of time. So you can see their positions. When it's a private company, do they have to do it? Do you see Donald Newhouse anywhere? Do you? I don't. Well. Okay, so wait. Oh, actually, hold on. Let me go back to Reddit. Okay, so it's Steve Huffman. Okay, that's what I thought. Let's see. I don't think this is the same guy. Even if it is, I don't know. But again, that that activity, 2019. I don't think that's him. Is this him? 
I don't think that's him either. Okay, so you see what I'm saying? Okay, so if it's a private company, they don't have to report their trades, meaning that you can't determine what their agenda is. But think about that. A private company can promote news opinions on CNN, and the people high up in those private companies can make investments, and they're not required by law to report what positions they're taking. So they they can take a short position on something that they're promoting a long position for. It doesn't matter what law you th may think says that's illegal or something cuz okay, find me the law because like it's pretty it's pretty gray area type stuff, right? This is how Amer this is America. This is capitalism. Capital is in the word. they're using their capital to short against retail. Do you see what I'm getting at? Okay. Again, I, I, it's not structured. I, I, I didn't plan this out, but I'm just kind of going off the cuff. Just dropping little truth bombs about the stuff that I figured out. Okay. So think about that. The people that own Reddit own CNN. So when you see opinions on Reddit and everyone on Reddit is like, ah, oh, my puts are getting wrecked. Why do you think that's happening, dude? It's the same people that own CNN, which we've been to before on my previous videos, showed... Um, where is it? There's a market section, please. Boom, 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 business, markets, there we go. And then again, to CNN, tied in with paid partner content, Who whose ads are they putting out? JP Morgan, Charles Schwab, all that stuff. Mor they're talking about a mortgage crisis. Global markets slide as recession fears grip <laughs> investors. Central banks to Wall Street, more pain is... Do you guys see what I'm talking about? Okay, this is literally... This is how you trade. You don't need to redo technical analysis, okay? Do that for... Do this stuff first. So then all you're looking for is where am I buying? And I should explain to you guys how to buy, correct? So we had a red week there. Now, I don't know if the next week will be red... But if I were you, I would have already have some skin in the game here, and I would be looking to add more below here, and I would definitely be looking to add more below here. And if there's another red week, I would be going pretty heavy in, you know, each consecutive week, red week, buying below the low of that week, each consecutive one, I would be buying with increasing leverage, okay? Which you might say that sounds risky, guys. I'm just putting out all the evidence for you here. You, it's like a guarantee. It's a sure thing. The market has to keep going up. People, retail is going to short, and they're going to get their faces ripped off, and they're going to keep doing it. Okay, watch how long. Watch how long they keep retail shorting. Watch it. Mark my words. Watch how long they have retail short. I'm not kidding you, dude. Do you want to make money off your the dummy the dummies on retail who think they're going to make the greedy gamblers? Okay, you need to, you and I need to punish them too for being greedy. This is how you trade. This is how we do it. Okay. Anyway, take care guys.